Showing up late, my sincere regrets. Honorable uh, Minister for Agriculture, a very seasoned man, and uh, a man who we all respect immensely, Sri Nirendra Nidigaru. Honorable Sri Subhash Deshaiji, who is the President of IVPA, Mr. Bansal, Mr. Gupta, to the distinguished uh, gathering, delegates from various parts of the world, Malaysia, Thailand, trade delegates from um, various consulates in Europe, and even the continent of United States, to all the friends from the media. A very warm welcome to all of you to this uh, two-day session being held in the capital city of Telangana, Hyderabad. Before I talk about IVPA, let me welcome you all to this beautiful city of Hyderabad, which is a wonderful mix of culture, heritage, and new age vibrancy as well. This is a city, in fact, it's the fifth largest city in India, and a city which has got uh, 400 and nearly 440 years of history and culture. So I urge you not only to uh, you know, spend time uh, in deliberating at the conference, but also please do take some time out to visit our beautiful heritage structures, our beautiful uh, you know, cultural monuments, enjoy the Hyderabadi biryani, which is uh, world famous truly, which is to kill for and die for if you're this wonderful, wonderful <laughs> state. Let me just give you a quick introduction of our state before I, uh, again, talk a little bit about the subject on hand here on, uh, you know, oil seeds and other related sectors. The state of Telangana is the youngest state in India. It was formed in 2014 on the 2nd of June. Uh, for those of you who are from outside of India, the constitution of India allows for the formation of new states and new provinces. So as a result, after a protracted struggle for decades, this new state came into being on the 2nd of June 2014 and uh, we've been barely there about, for, you know, we've barely existed for about eight and a half years now. So we've done some tremendously interesting things, uh, particularly to the, for those of you who are not from Hyderabad or Telangana, I would like to give you a quick overview of what all we have done, what all we have accomplished in the last eight and a half years. Um, we are just about getting out of the pandemic. Um, I think very recently we've started seeing each other's faces fully. Uh, until recently we all covered ourselves in masks and gloves and whatnot. Never did we ever think that we'll have to go through something like this in the history of humanity. COVID has been an unprecedented pandemic and I'm proud as a, as a citizen of Telangana, as a minister of Telangana, that the city that you are currently seated in, Hyderabad, is actually the globe's vaccine capital. In fact, we produce one third of human vaccines from this very city of India, Hyderabad and the state Telangana. For those of you who do not know this, it might come as a surprise to you. We produce 9 billion doses of human vaccines from Hyderabad every year. In fact, by next year, with all the production uh, you know, uh, augmentation that is happening, we will be producing 14 billion doses of vaccine, taking it to almost 50% of global production. So you're seated in a city that is extremely safe healthcare-wise. So in case you're wondering about COVID or any other pandemic, you're seated in not only the vaccine, we also are one of the most important hubs for med tech in India. So Asia's largest stent manufacturing facility is also in Hyderabad. So we are the life sciences hub of India and most definitely a very important life sciences hub in the rest of the world as well. And not too far from where you're seated right now at this hotel, if you get out and if you travel a bit on the, uh, on the left side, you would end up in the Hyderabad Knowledge City and the Hyderabad Financial District, which is where some of the most prominent technology companies of the world have chosen to set up their largest campuses outside of their headquarters. The who's who of technology industry, Apple, Meta, Amazon, Uber, Salesforce, Microsoft, Google, uh, Micron, Qualcomm, the list goes on. It's a huge, huge list. All of their second largest campuses in the world are actually here in Hyderabad, which is where you all are. So my, my humble appeal to all of you, please do take some time out. 
after you after you you know uh, are done with your deliberations here to go around look around and in fact the world's largest innovation campus which seats both T Hub which is the world's largest technology incubator and also T Works which is India's largest prototyping facility is hardly a stone's throw away from here a block away from here i urge you all also to explore that the reason why i am mentioning all this is because i think we are in terms of uh, around we are at a very interesting inflection point as niranjan reddy garu had just mentioned the globe's population the planet's population has touched 800 crores 8 billion which is a huge number and out of which again 1.4 billion is right in this country in india as the population grows as the consumption grows interesting challenges emerge not only in terms of healthcare not only in terms of technology not only in terms of the points of confluence but also in terms of our consumption patterns so that leads us to the question at hand here edible oils and what can india contribute to the rest of the world and what can telangana do to the rest of the world as well in telangana we've done some truly amazing things and since we have some very distinguished uh, chief executive officers such as mr gupta of louis dreyfus uh, we also have uh, mr sandeep bhan of uh, sime darbi of course mr desai of imami and we also have several others who are uh, we have representatives from uh, adani wilmar we also have uh, mr um, uh, sandeep uh, who's from um, patanjali group we also as uh, mr rastana from uh, uh, the patanjali group we also have uh, representatives of godrej agrovet let me take 2 minutes from your time and let me tell you how doing business in telangana is different from any other part of india for those of you who are from outside of india you know when you come into india your port of entry really matters in a big way meaning over simplified comparison between india and china Uh, they say you know you are 1.4 billion china is almost 1.45 billion you're a very similar sized country population wise geographically of course they are much bigger so how are you uh, you know uh, similar and how are you dissimilar to china let me tell you the comparison ends with respect to population nothing else is the same we are very very different in fact india and china are so different just to give you one example you see about five along with me five different gentlemen who are all indians we may look the same in terms of in terms of our skin color but the language we speak at home mr desai the language he he is, lives in kolkata i'm not sure where mr bansal lives mumbai is it indore indore where do he lives gurgaon gurgaon the language that each of us speak at our homes is as different from each other as is possibly english german french and spanish india is not a single country india is not a homogeneous entity india is a very diverse very heterogeneous entity in fact there is not one single india there are 28 states in india 22 official languages there are more than 300 on official languages some of these languages do not even have a script everything in india changes every 150 kilometers the language the dialect the culture the cuisine the eating habits the spending habits even ease of doing business varies from one state to another each of enacted is the tsi pass which basically stands for the telangana state industrial project approval self certification system what that means is for instance if imami wanted to launch a new edible oil factory in telangana i'm pitching to you mr desai in case you know <laughs> and mr gupta as well and mr bansal as well of course if you wanted to start a new factory in telangana you do not need to meet any minister any bureaucrat you don't need to meet mr reddy or myself or anyone in the bureaucracy as long as you comply with the law of the land as long as you believe that you are in compliance with the law of the land you can actually hit the ground running you can start construction of your factory on day 1 mr choudhury of gemini edible oils the freedom group 
is here. He's chosen to invest in Telangana. He's investing about 300 crores sir, or 500 crores of rupees. And he's chosen recently to announce this lovely factory of his right here. Now, government or procure privately, you can start construction on day one. And what, that, what, what happens next? What happens next is, all we request is that you submit an application online on the TSI Pass portal. We request you to put in all the details, the nature of the business, what is the kind of oil you're going to produce, what is the kind of uh, you know, investment you're making, what is the kind of employment you're generating, are you a red category industry or an orange category industry or a green category industry. Once we receive all that information, we process it within 15 days. If we don't deliver on the 15 day window, on the 16th day, backed by a legislation, by statute, it's an automatic approval, it's a deemed approval. No state in India will tell you this. And the third thing that will happen is, even the most senior bureaucrat, even the most senior officer, if they are found responsible for the delay beyond the 15 day window, from the 16th day, I as a minister, as an, as a, as an executive of the state, have been authorized by statute to levy a penalty of rupees 1,000 per day to that officer who is responsible for the delay. For those of you, for those of you who are thinking this sounds too good to be true, does it actually work, or is this guy another politician who is just talking his way through? I'm told Malaysia, state of Telangana, in this state of Telangana, what you see is what you get. In the last eight years, we have not just made promises, but we've also kept them. More than 20,000 approvals have been given through this process in the last eight years. In fact, all the large campuses that I've just mentioned, including Amazon's world's largest campus, has been given all clearances within 11 days. We gave 20,000 approvals. We have been able to attract nearly $35 billion in investment and have been able to create 1.6 million direct job potential. And the story goes on. And therefore, we urge all of you also to start looking at the prospect of investing in India through the gateway called Telangana. Not only have we done well on industrialization, we've also done exceedingly well in terms of holistic development. Industry has grown in Telangana, but so has our environment. You know, a lot of times, you know, when we talk of Malaysia and the palm oil cultivation that has happened there, you know, there's a lot of stories, negative stories. Our green cover, our green cover has grown from 24% of the geographical area of the state to 31.7% by 7.7%. And what we have done in the last eight years, been a state in India after independence in 1947, where within a short span of seven years, the area irrigated has more than doubled. Area cultivated has more than doubled in about seven years. And that's exactly what our Honorable Chief Minister has done. If you have your phones with you right now, let me urge you, let me urge you, please pull out your phone. Some of you are already on your phones. Um, please pull out your phone. Go to Google. If you can go to Google for a minute, I will really uh, be grateful. Please type in, please search for the world's largest lift irrigation project. The world's largest lift irrigation project. Somebody please tell me the answer as well. I'm waiting. It is the Kaleshwaram project in this beautiful state of Telangana. It was executed flat in four years, in a short span of four years. We lift water from 82 meters above sea level through a multiple stage lift system, we bring it almost to 618 meters. Now, this project not only has added 40 plus lakh acres of new command area, it has also has been instrumental in providing drinking water to this beautiful city of Hyderabad. You know, we hear enough stories about Three Gorges Dam in China and other engineering miracles elsewhere. A lot of times Indians don't typically end up appreciating what is happening in their own backyard, in their own state. And this is truly an engineering miracle that is unfolded right in front of our eyes, heralded by our Honorable Chief Minister, Sri KCR Garu, 
In a short span of four years, we have been able to execute the world's largest lift irrigation project. If I have to put it differently, the youngest state in India, the youngest state of India, has pulled off an engineering miracle and has completed the world's largest lift irrigation project in a short span of four years. As a result, not only because of this project, but also because of our, our paddy production, production of rice. Back in 2014, our production was about 68 lakh metric tons, which is 6.8 million metric tons. You know what that was last year, this year in fact? It has more than quadrupled to 25.9 million metric tons. 2.59 crore lakhs of metric tons. As a result, we are now faced with a challenge. But also, Telangana in some pockets, especially Adilabad district, Asifabad district, Nirmal district, is known for production of soya bean. And the Honorable Minister's own district, Vanaparthi, Gadwal, Mahbub Nagar, Nagar Karnool, there are about five districts, Narayan Pet, they are known for groundnut production. Oil, so oil palm of course, soya bean, groundnut, and more importantly sunflower, also in various pockets, various parts of the state, will all contribute to the state's raw material production. Therefore, I request the honorable chief executives of various agro companies, agro processing companies such as Imami, such as Godrej, such as Freedom and others to Mr. Gupta as well of Louis Dreyfus to kindly consider Telangana because not only are we encouraging our farmers to produce those crops which will reduce import dependence in terms of edible oils because Mr. Desai was kind enough to educate me and tell me that 60 percent of edible oils today in India are imported. In fact, with the Russia-Ukraine conflict recently, sunflower was badly hit, is what he was mentioning to me. So therefore, in Telangana, you have a state where the agriculture minister is seized of a very unique challenge, a very good problem at hand, where he has to move farmers away from paddy into something which is useful, far more useful for the rest of the nation. And also, you have an industry minister who's telling you that you don't need to meet me. I humbly request all of you, and most importantly, let me also quickly add, humbly request you to also start looking at opportunities in the food processing sector. We have earmarked about 10,000 acres of land under what we call as the Telangana Special Food Processing Zones. We're happy to work with you, for those of you who want to set up factories here, because over the course of next five years, as the Honorable Minister laid out, you'll have 20 lakh acres under oil palm cultivation. You'll see enhanced groundnut production. You'll see enhanced sunflower crop. You'll see enhanced soya bean production. As a result, you will have, you'll be very, very close to the raw material in case you wanted to start a factory here. And we are happily wanting you to, uh, wanting to welcome you into our special food processing zones where we will be able to tailor make a set of incentives for you. For instance, if you are willing to share with me what my competitor in West Bengal or Karnataka or Maharashtra is offering you in terms of making it easy for you to come in and do your business because bottom line does matter in business, we will be happy to either meet or beat the best offer you have from my competition in India. Thank you very much. I I hope you will enjoy the rest of your stay in Hyderabad. I hope you will enjoy the deliberations. And I look forward to getting some checkbooks and uh, you know, and ensuring that some factories also open up in Telangana. Jai Telangana. Thank you very much to the Honorable Minister for your gracious presence here and for your kind and